and a senior member of the Labour Party, Pat McFadden, who is a shadow chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. I'm not in, I've never been entirely sure what that post means, but you are Labour's campaign chief, Pat McFadden. Uh, very good morning to you. Right, well, let's just, let's just set international issues on one side uh, for a moment, because um, you have a challenge on your hands. You want to get elected. We're looking at a general election, probably in about a year's time. And we have a leading polling guru who is saying, don't get complacent about the lead that you have over the Tory party, because Sir Keir Starmer, your leader, about to give a big speech today, is remarkably unsuccessful at impressing himself on voters. According to Ipsos, 50% don't know what the Labour leader stands for. A uh, YouGov poll this week found that less than one in four feel that the Labour leader has a clear plan for the country, and amongst Labour supporters, less than half feel he does. How are you going to tackle that? Who is Sir Keir Starmer? Well, he's going to make a major speech today. This is a, a, probably the, the biggest uh, moment uh, for an opposition leader, certainly, in the, uh, in the political year. And he will set out what he wants to do. And we've already been doing it in recent days as we've been setting out uh, proposals to address the dentistry crisis that's affecting people around the country, to cut NHS waiting lists, to give more people access to that dream of home ownership, uh, to have better rights for people at work. Uh, and in today's papers, being trailed uh, for his speech uh, to crack down on the crime and antisocial behaviour that's plaguing so many town centres. So this is a policy-rich conference. And I think that when Keir stands up and makes his speech today, people will see the combination of discipline and hope that he will bring to the leadership of the country if he's fortunate enough to be elected uh, whenever okay. the election comes. Discipline and hope. What about money? How's he going to raise the money to do all of that? Well, I say discipline and hope for good reasons. Uh, discipline is absolutely important. By that, I mean financial discipline, financial responsibility, because we saw the consequences last year of disregarding that with that disastrous Tory mini-budget that crashed the economy. So we're not about to repeat that mistake, and that's why discipline is fundamental to everything we do. But allied to that, you do have to give people hope for change, and that's what we've been doing uh, through the policies that I outlined to you a moment or two yeah, ago. Yeah, but I'm still wondering where the money's coming today. from. If you're going to put money into public services in, in order to raise standards for people, are you going to raise taxes? I mean, that's always the assumption about a a Labour government, that they would raise taxes. You've, you've said that you're going to uh, change the policy on non-DOMs, but that's already uh, been assigned. What are you going to do in order to raise standards in public services? Well, it's interesting you say there's an assumption about Labour and taxes. Mm -hmm. I have to uh, say to you and your viewers that right now we're in the middle of major tax increases being imposed by the Conservatives. Mm -hmm. uh, the personal allowance has been frozen for five years. That's a major tax increase. Uh, they put taxes up to the highest tax burden that we've had in some 60 or 70 years. And my colleague, Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, she's been clear that she thinks the tax burden on working people is high enough. And we've been honest with the British people because of the mess that the Tories have made of the economy, because of those facts, uh, Future spending is going to have to be funded by good economic growth. And that's why it's at the heart of everything that we're seeing at the conference this week. Okay, so can I just establish, you're not going to put up taxes. Are you going to, if, you, if Rachel Reeves thinks they're too high, are you going to cut taxes? Well, obviously, uh, she will have to make a budget if we're fortunate enough to be elected. Tax is a matter for the Shadow Chancellor, uh, but she's been clear that she believes the tax burden on working people is high enough. And no wonder when we're in the middle of a series of Tory-imposed tax increases, uh, which the Prime Minister as Chancellor initiated a couple of years ago. Pat, um, you were part of the Tony Blair team in 1997, going into government um, with you know, a, a clear vision to, to change Britain at the time. There was a piece in The Guardian this weekend with lots of your colleagues back from 1997 
all saying that Keir Starmer is being too, too cautious compared to Tony Blair. He's not telling people what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. I just wondered, are all those um, colleagues of yours, Alistair Campbell, one of them, are they being unhelpful? <laughs> well, uh, I was part of that era, as you know, as you said, uh, Ed, and I'm really proud of what that Labour government uh, achieved. And because I was part of it, I remember that reassurance was pretty big to Tony Blair. Uh, for him, reassurance wasn't just for Christmas. Uh, it was for all year round, and it was pretty important. So I think what you need is a combination of that discipline, that reassurance, with the hope of new policies and the hope of new change. And it's all got to be put forward in an atmosphere of candour. If we are fortunate enough to be elected... If we win the trust of the British people, we will inherit a difficult economic situation. And that's why we talk about a long-term plan. Things aren't going to change overnight, but they can change in a better direction. And it's through the announcements that we've been making this week on health, on housing, on crime, on antisocial behaviour, on rights for people at work, that people can see the building blocks, see the direction of travel. So what I would say in terms of the past is, yes, be proud of it, but it's time to write some new history for the Labour Party. Part of and the um, advantage Tony Blair had was that, that um, back then he um, was, was new. He was new Labour. He was the new guy. And part of the challenge for Keir Starmer is he had to make a lot of promises back in 2020 to become elected. And he's had to then shift on from those promises. So he's no longer committed to abolishing tuition fees or to returning free movement. Um, a number of things he's had to do U-turns on. Is that part of the challenge? Is that just inevitable? for Keir Starmer, that he's had to, um, to confuse people a little bit over the last couple of years? I think leadership changes everyone. And uh, the world is moving at a very fast pace. And since uh, Keir Starmer became leader, you've had a pandemic, you've had Russia's invasion of Ukraine, you've had a very diff different economic situation, and now you've got the unfolding situation uh, in Israel. And any leader... Uh, would look at those situations, uh, look at all those events and say, what is my programme now for this situation, for today and tomorrow? And that's what he's done and it's, you know, that's the okay. task of leadership is to do that. All right. Pat McFadden, thanks very much thank you, indeed.